Hello, hey, this is Purge, bringing you guys a first-person replay commentary. I am playing Offlane Fury, and I'm finally doing it. You guys have been asking for a really long time, and I finally got an early game that was okay. Um, Furion in my Dota plane history is one of the few heroes that I honestly have never played much or been good at. He's actually, I think, in my top six most played heroes because I keep once in a while I try playing him, but I always dick it up and I don't play it very well. And the main reason for that is because Nature's Prophet has a very, very safe play style. You are supposed to play Nature's Prophet like a carry, basically. You slowly snowball, you take kills when you can get them, and you do not feed in all circumstances. Um, it's not worth it to die, generally. And it's because Nature's Prophet has so much power because of his global ability, so that if you do snowball, he not only becomes a carry, but he becomes a global ganking, can be anywhere that I need to be ever carry. And that's when things get really scary. So, uh, the way that he's been generally played in the last couple months, at least in the pro scene, is actually in the offlane. Now, you guys have heard me rant before about Nature's Prophet in a jungle. I really don't like him in a jungle position because he generally just sits there and he literally jungles and he never stops. Um, the problems with this is that it makes your other lanes really weak. Your safe lane usually only has two heroes. If they have a good offlaner, like a good offlane hero that's hard to kill, like Timbersoft, for example, then your carry generally has some trouble. Maybe your support might die, or but most importantly, the offlaner generally gets a little too much experience, and it can be kind of hard to come back from that. If you play him in the offlane role, you can accomplish multiple things. You can still get your Midas approximately at the same time, assuming things go okay. You can deny EXP and farm from their supports. Um, you can hopefully slightly pressure their carry as well, decrease his farm, and you can do this all while still getting a re relatively reasonably timed Midas. And you can also TP gank. Um, you can TP gank to other lanes and not end up losing too much. And once in a while, when the lane pushes up, you can end up getting experience in gold that otherwise wouldn't be very easily gotten. So to talk about what I'm doing now, I starting, I'm starting with the Gloves of Haste and two Clarity Potions. This will get me a pretty fast Midas. I believe this is the build that Admiral Bulldog does when he plays offlane. Uh, the first two Treants, you spawn as soon as you spawn, and you're just kind of scouting around for heroes or checking out what the lanes are. If we take a look at the map, we'll be able to see the heroes, the enemy's positions at all time. But I'm mostly just checking to make sure and see where the support heroes are. So you're going to end up running to the bottom of the tower uh, to the typical offlane position. You actually don't want to spawn treants in the fountain. If you're jungling a nature's prophet, you do want to spawn treants in the fountain in the fountain before you go to the jungle the because that'll save you begins. mana. But when you're doing an offlane prophet, you have to spawn them as the creep spawn. You pop a clarity potion immediately and you send your treants out to be annoying. Now, uh, goal number one for your treants is basically... Um, to hopefully push the creep wave towards you and also to block the camps. I did this a little weird. I don't completely know if this is the best way to do this, but I have the treants running past the creep wave. And what I want to do is make sure that the creep wave ends up stacking with the next creep wave. If that ends up happening, then um, the wave is going to end up pushing and I should have a pretty okay advantage. Now, one small mistake I made there is I didn't use the second treant to block the other medium camp. I ended up pausing the treants on the magic bush. If you guys notice why I stopped them there, I paused them on the magic bush because what that does is it blocks the medium pull camp right there, and it blocks that large camp. So it blocks two camps essentially. Um, here I maybe waited a bit too long with the treants. I should have stacked up two waves together rather than um, separating them like that. But um, now what I'm doing is I'm using my next wave of treants to again block the camp. So pull camp is 100% blocked. I don't have to use wards to do that. The large camp is also blocked. I did this importantly because there's a doom on the enemy team and he can actually use that camp effectively. And now the waves that I stack back are now going to stack. There's two range creeps. There's many melee creeps. And that wave will push, which is going to guarantee me experience. And technically, I haven't actually lost that much experience yet because very few of those first wave of creeps have actually died yet. If you do it correctly, none of them will die. Um, if you stack the waves up. I should have ran the waves back to the second wave rather than just like parking them into the jungle kind of. But at this point I'm kind of safe enough to go forward and grab some EXP and some last hits. I'm going to spawn Treants again. Again I'm going to take one to block the magic bush and I'm going to take the other to probably scout or just guarantee that it gets blocked. It's a little redundant to put it there. Um, maybe I should have used it to stack is actually what I probably should have done with the second Treant. But uh, it's okay. I'll lose that one. Now I'm just peppering up last hits. It's very important that you get any last hits that become available to you as a as an offlaner. And luckily for me, I ended up getting a lot of these, I believe. And yeah. So I missed a couple, like two or three, but not too bad. I blocked the, the camp again. Um, they're going to go for Treants, try not to feed those. They actually don't give very much gold or EXP, uh, EXP, but every little bit can make the difference. So... 
If you're really good at last hitting and you know how to last under a tower quite well, you can usually get a lot more of these, but I, I can't believe I got that one, honestly. I was like, oh my god, how did I get that last hit? Um, but so far, so good. Uh, the medium cap has been blocked again. I think I'm going to miss the next stack or the next block, so um, this is going to mean that um, the Jakira will be able to get some EXP, but most importantly, I want to look at hero levels, because this is this is what I'm accomplishing more than anything. In a nor normal circumstance, I actually won't have a Doombringer. They would have another support hero. And in that case, you end up being really, really effective, because uh, their Jakira is still level 2, which is really important. What is it? Where's their Spearbreaker lane? Was he playing support also? No, he's an offlane hero. Um, I did stack the Ancient Camp, by the way. If you have a little bit of downtime, go stack the Ancient Camp. You can do this with your Treants as well, actually. So again, I blocked the pull camp, and I blocked the uh, the medium, the large camp, which is going to hurt Doom's jungle a little bit. And now I'm going to go run these around and stack the creep camp again, because I have a little bit of time with these. So I'll just pull the creeps together. I'm going to go run them over here and just kind of sit them. This means that they're going to be delayed until the next wave. And the next wave will spawn in like 30 seconds, or right now, and then um, the wave should push back towards me again. I don't think my treants are going to last long enough for them to end up stacking again, or for me to block the camps. But on the bright side, I did end up blocking um, the pull camp quite a few times. So that is going to hurt their jungle. Like right now, Doom, for example, he has literally nothing that he can do. I was considering TPing for that, and I figured that I would maybe be able to kill the Storm Spirit, but it probably wasn't going to happen, so... Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Another thing I accomplished by stacking that wave back again is that uh, Lifestealer had to last it under tower, and if we take a look at his last hit so far, um, he's actually doing really well, so <laughs> grats to him. <laughs> so that's maybe not accomplishing as much, but whatever. In normal circumstances as a prophet, most people have actually gone back to the fountain and then gone to the jungle so far, but I'm actually really highly leveled. I'm level 3 at the moment, and again, the wave is pushing, so it looks like I'm going to get guaranteed 3 waves of EXP, which means my um, EXP is going really well. I'm queuing up boots um, right now. You can't see it, but I'm queuing up boots in my quick bite just in case I end up dying. I have one benefit here in the fact that Lifestealer is not very good against a solo and HH prophet. Um, the reason is he doesn't really have good kill possibilities. Attacked a little too early on that one. Um, but yeah, Nature's Prophet is a uh, pretty good Radiant's escape against against Life Stealer attack. essentially, and that would mean that um, if he does try to kill me, I can just TP out basically. At this point, I was really happy with my last hit so far. I've got a thousand gold at five minutes in the offlane. I've also contested a lot of EXP and uh, pulling potential that the Jakiro could work with, and he's actually given up on the offlane. If he would have checked now, he would have realized, Radiant's oh wow, he's actually got under um, the, the 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 waves are actually there, so he could actually pull on me. But for now, he's not going to be here. I think he's going around roaming now, so it kind of in a way puts a little bit more pressure on my uh, other allies, but it's not too bad. I think a little bit of lag there, that was weird. I don't know if that was me currently, or if that was the replay. I guess it probably wasn't the replay, it wouldn't show in the replay. So, I'm very close to a Midas now. Uh, definitely don't want to be greedy at this point. I'm going to wait and stack this wave one more time, I believe. I could go for last hits over by the Life Stealer, but he probably has phase boots at this point. And he does. If he has phase boots and I get stunned at any other way and open wounded, I will die. So, things get a little scary. I've tried the offlane profit against the Spirit Breaker carry once, and it just doesn't work at all. Because as soon as the Spirit Breaker hits 6, there's no way that I can stand in lane, because he can easily solo kill me. Like, very, very easily. I was looking at TB on this one. I don't know if he would have gotten the kill or not. It's hard to say. But I did stack the Ancients, and now I'm going to go back into the jungle and uh, just farm there for a while. Oh, I have a brilliant Torah, that's why I had so much mana. I was really, I was not sure. I, I had no idea why my mana was full in this case. I shouldn't have full mana, but the brilliant Torah actually helps out a lot because I can spawn a lot more Treants. So, um, the Enigma is a little upset that I was taking his jungle because he was very close to a Blink Dagger, I believe. But if I can get a Midas at a six to seven minute mark as an offlane prophet, I'm doing a great job, honestly. Um, looks like Ursa just got killed here, but I think that was the Spear Breaker charge gank, actually. Stuff is scary. They actually have really good life stealer synergy this game. I can use either Storm Spirit or the Spirit Breaker. And in fact, I'm actually hard countered by a lot of these heroes. Life Stealer, uh, alright, well, basically, Spirit Breaker and Storm Spirit are counters toward, towards Nature's Prophet. Because normally you end up doing a lot of really annoying split push. And that's not necessarily going to happen this game because I have to be a lot more careful about those ganking heroes. Um, 
I don't think that my mid game on Nature's Prophet is good at all, but um, I think my early game was darn near perfect, other than missing some last hits, of course. I think I did a really good job. So I just now got my Midas. It'll get to me by like 7.30 for me. That's great. I didn't die. I got decent last hits. So I was pretty happy about this. I don't necessarily want to take the pull camp either. We maybe could have pushed this. I think I, I perhaps should have just stayed in lane and pushed. But bottom tower is under attack. pick up my Midas. Using it on a jungle creep is going to give me level 6. And I'm going to TP to the bot lane. I could try to take the mud golem. But this is free EXP. And uh, last hits. Lane creeps are always going to be more experienced. So it's better for me to come down here. If you do do the offlane right though, it's always going to be better than the, the jungle method. If you jungle a Nature's Prophet, you're going to get a Midas at approximately the same time. Still maybe a minute earlier, maybe more if you get a First Blood or a kill or something like that. It's usually not worth it to end up um, just doing a jungle Nature's Prophet in my opinion. I really don't like it. I'm going to go send the uh, Treants around to get some vision and stuff. This is something I started doing more and more as the game progressed. It's something I should be doing a lot more as I play. You just send them around for vision, especially when you're in the offlane. This is something that would be super, super nice to have in almost all circumstances, actually. To be slightly worried about this Doombringer, I think, but I think we had Zeus coming, so we were looking for a kill here. So I'm just going to butter him up with like two last sets, and then I'm going to do the Sprout. I'm going to ulti somewhere else on the map, and then as that comes in, it should yeah do a bunch of damage. So... Nature's wrath. It's about what you aim to do. Luckily, um, it was kind of nice that I got the kill there. Um, snowballs me a little bit, but... Again, spread out the Treants in the jungle. They're really badly spread out right now. I ended up doing it better, I swear, as the game continued, but... Radiant's and next item I'm going to go for is going to be Treads. So Treads Midas is pretty common for an early Nature's Prophet. So, the wave is pushed up a bit. I was a little scared about going to um, gank this. I've got, almost got Midas off cooldown as well. Maybe I should have just shifted down and started pushing. I think I probably should have with him. I think it was maybe a mistake, but I'm still pretty scared, Radiant's to be honest. He's also not committing attack. that hard to a push. I mean, in a normal in a normal game, pressuring like this would not be that bad, honestly. Dyer's like, pressuring the tower, tower, trying to take the tower. Attack. But they have so many good ganking heroes, like a Spirit Breaker, that I honestly Radiant's just don't want to be on the map most of the time. If you're on the attack. map, it gives them a chance to decide to charge you, and then you're just going to have a shitty time. So what I did instead was I used one Treant to pull the creep wave back. This allows our creep wave to hit the tower for like 30 seconds. It's also going to push the wave back so that I can again last hit under my tower, and it should give me pretty good um, EXP. And then I spread my Treants out to block pretty much every single... Uh, jungle camp that existed. I also teleported to try to stack this camp. I don't know if I was successful or not. There's a lot of jungle camps there. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like I did do it correctly. So, I decided it was worth the teleport to get one more stack off because that would increase our total GPM in the future. Radiance middle tower is under attack. So, neutral camps were completely blocked there. Uh, they won't be able to do any pulling or anything. It's got a double wave. That means I'm going to get more experience. And I'm just kind of like preparing myself to have, again, more places for me to farm and less places for them to farm. I'm not really looking around the map very much, so that's definitely something you could criticize me on for my profit play. Again, I'm still really bad at this. Uh, I, I almost never play the hero, and playing him in the offlane is something that's new to me. And as well, I, I just don't really feel like he he fits my play style very much. I really like playing aggressive heroes. I don't really like playing snowball heroes unless they're carries. Uh, playing profit is a little more dangerous because it's like you're playing a dangerous offlane hero, but you're also trying to snowball, which is oftentimes very difficult to do. I think this is the point. Oh yeah, I was gonna go stack with the uh, the treants, but I was way way too late here. I also didn't butter that up. It's a mistake. I could TP to this, but I think he looks yeah he looked really dead anyway. So actually, I'm not even like looking down. This is really scary. I was like, why didn't this guy just charge me? He should have. So then I decided to poke him. I believe with right clicks. Again, I could be TP into the top lane maybe to try to set up a gank. A little worried about getting killed again. Who is over there? Lifestealer and Jakiro. It's not necessarily something I can really help on anyways. Got the last hit. I kind of wanted to just bait him into using mana. At, th at this point I think he realized that my HP was pretty high. He honestly could have tried to kill me there. But if he popped his ulti I don't know if it would have been successful. I think he's level 6 actually. So he's a little bit behind me. He's level 7 actually. He doesn't earn. He doesn't have treads yet. And here's my beautiful stack. It's all it's all uh, golems, rock golems here. Let's see if my stack works this time. I felt like it's really hard to tell how many stacks I had. Yeah, it looks like I pulled it a little too early. I thought that maybe that since there were so many that I just pulled it slightly early and it'd be fine. But I think that was actually a mistake. 
I think he's still gonna do it at 53 for late camps. So didn't get it, but that's okay. There's, it's still like a five or six stack. Those are, those are, or, I think it's a four or five stack. Those are really, really hard to do. So I had one slight mistake here with my treants. Nice mini stun there by DK. The reason he threw the bolt was because it does a mini stun and it stops the charge. Can always stop the charge. All right, the mistake that I made was that I didn't have my treants scouting out where this doom was hiding. This is a moderate mistake from us. I was able to sprout the Doom, and that's going to hopefully prevent him from dying. But unfortunately, it ends up getting me killed. I think he actually bashed right after his ulti as well. So, um, if I would have had my Treon vision a bit better, I put them really deep into the jungle, and I didn't spot any like in the entrance. So, he just hid in a good spot, and it put, our, it put me as well as uh, DK in a bad spot. I actually was more out of position than DK was, actually, I think. But... Uh, yeah, I was definitely more out of position than he was. So this slows down my farm a little bit, and in fact I haven't actually been focusing that much on farming in the last minute or two. I've been like stacking camps and pulling. I think this is one mistake that I made this game, um, that I was I was playing a little bit too safe here. I just ultied close by because I knew it would bounce on these creeps, and we'd be able to get the kill most likely. And now we're going to take a tower. This is something you should be doing a bit more. So this is part of the reason why my uh, my GPM was maybe a bit lower than it should have been. Because I was definitely spending more time um, controlling the wave than I was actually ganking. I have no idea why their whole team ran back to base. What is going on? I am, I'm really confused, but... Also using Midas on time is really good. I'm going to spread the Treants out again. You actually don't need that many Treants to jungle. You just need enough to tank. Their damage output is way less than mine is right now. So if I just spread them out for vision, then I can just continue jungling. Oh, this does not look good. Yeah, so I just kind of like let him die at this point. There was like no possible way that I was going to save him. So, And now back in the jungle. I'm going to try to make a Shadow Blade now. If you're doing really well, you should have your Shadow Blade about here. But again, I died once, and I, I definitely didn't prioritize jungling as much as I maybe should have. Or jungling, farming, split pushing, all that stuff. If I would have split push more, that's definitely something I need to work on is split pushing. I don't do it very well right now. But I, I'm still kind of in the scared state. I played this game very scared, which I think is the right mentality to play as Nature's Prophet. You have to be very, very greedy. They're asking me to TP to tank Rashan. So I attempted to do it here. He almost died, though. He could hit, he could hit him right there. He would have been fine. I think he actually let the the Fury Swipes reset, a slight mistake from him, but I just TP'd here to, to tank for him. Unfortunately, they didn't really ask me to do that until I had already TP'd to the jungle, so I didn't have Treants and I didn't have anything else, so that was kind of unfortunate. But we got the rush on. I'll TP back and jungle some more. This is the right skill build for Profit, by the way, especially if you're in the offlane. Sometimes people will say, um, skip max levels of your Treants which I agree with sometimes. But in this case, um, I ended up maxing out Treants just because I was... Just gives me more pushing potential and stuff. I'm gonna ulti here just in case. Give him a chance of surviving, but... That looks pretty good. My HP is really low here as well, so I just simply didn't want to go fight. Thought there was a good chance of me dying. I was uh, thinking about TPing on DK in case he ended up being in trouble, but... I maybe should have just gone back to heal after the Rashan tank, because in most cases, I'll normally just be like... In most cases, you won't take that much damage as profit unless you're dead or something, so... Um, I don't know. I don't know if I really needed to. I probably should have gone heal, though. It it, uh, it, lo it lost me the chance to go fight that earlier. I, I was looking at opportunities to come in, but I wasn't didn't really see a whole lot of opportunities for me being useful. In this case, I was useful, because everybody was dead, and I said, okay, well, we'll push towers now. So I TP'd in, I got Treants, and now we're going to block the tower. I was kind of scared at this point, because I was uh, I knew Spiritbreaker had uh, revived, so I just got the hell out of there and ditched. Again, they have a lot of really good heroes against what we're working with. I almost TP'd to the tower here, and then I cancelled it because I thought things were going bad. I could have Shadow Bladed in from the mid lane. Instead, what I end up doing is uh, TPing finally. I'm gonna ulti creeps. It didn't bounce very well though. I misclicked slightly here. I thought my Shadow Blade was on 4, my 4 hotkey instead of my, my ulti. So I, I meant to kill him. 
I guess he still ended up dying with the Crystal Maiden, but... Radiant's top tower is under attack. Whatever, we got some kills, guys. I'm probably a little too greedy to always go to int treads, I think. I think I should probably stay more in strength treads. I don't really need the... the int. It's not like you need to tread switch that much. You can TP back to base every 20 seconds if you really need to, so... Alright, um, at this point my skill build is a little questionable, maybe. Uh, some people actually don't like getting Sprout more than one level. They like going stats instead. And if you look at my HP right now, it's actually pretty low while I'm on in treads. Um, in some ways, it's a lot better to just sit on strength treads. When you're jungling, you might as well just go in treads or whatever. But um, you are very limited in terms of your survivability because you don't have a hard stun. You basically are limited to Sprout as well as Shadow Blade. And we've already shown that they're actually ganking a lot. We just see a Spirit Breaker here. Looks like he ended up canceling can go farm now, potentially. Nobody's taken the Ancients yet. We actually don't have very good Ancient Dean heroes. The best Ancient Dean heroes are ranged life stealers like Luna or Troll Warlord or um, who's another good example? Draw Ranger is really good. So I kind of decided, whatever, I'll just go start on this. We have a lot of farmers anyways. We have like four heroes that want farm. So we didn't really have the best places for us to get EXP and gold. So I just said, whatever, I'm just going to auto attack the hell out of these things for a while. Actually, jank, uh, ganking our jungle as well. Um, there's a bit of a trick to this. I didn't do this extremely well, but essentially I tried to keep the Treants not always right next to them in damage range. See so again, looks not looking very good for us. I'm going to ulti the top lane in hopes that we can snipe one. And I actually did get one because of this. Because I knew when Zeus is about to die, he's going to throw everything that he has to try to blow them up. So... I figured there's a chance that one of them would die if I also ulti. And that's another really, really important thing that you should do when you play um, Nature's Prophet. You do not want to just spam your ulti every whatever time it's Radiant's off cooldown. It's seriously a mistake to do that. Attack. And it doesn't really help your team very much. The reason being, it's kind of similar to what I was doing in the early game. I was like spending the whole early game to try to make sure that the creep wave is by our towers. Because Radiant's number one makes it an unsafe place for them attack. to farm, so they probably won't go there. And... Um, Yeah, I guess I made that point. Sorry, I thought I had more points about that point, but it's actually, like, a original point. Okay, so, basically the problem when you ulti it all the time, it pushes all the lanes, constantly. And you don't even necessarily always get the last hits, because your ulti doesn't always, it doesn't, like, kill everybody with the, uh, the early last hits, for example. Or, yeah, the first couple hits don't always one-shot creeps. It's usually, the, like, the later hits. So, really, all you're doing is lowering the HP of all the creeps, and it pushes the waves, and, yeah, it sure gives you a lot of good map control, but, um... The map control is great, but you really want your waves to be closer to your towers for last hitting reasons, basically. Um, if you push all the waves towards them, the, great, the waves will group up, they can actually farm more efficiently then. Because then they can come up to wave, they can do an AoE, which will give them all the creeps, and then they can go back to the jungle, and then that'll happen over and over again. It, puts, it also puts a lot of farm on me, but not very many my allies as well. So, you might say like, oh, but you get so farmed on you. You do, but it honestly hurts your allies a lot, so don't do it. You should not be spamming your ulti. You should be using it in times like that where um, where your allies are doing ganks or where there's team fights. If you save them for ganks and team fights, it's going to give you a lot more um, kill potential here. I think, yeah, the Storm Spirit found Zeus again here. I figured this one was worth showing up to. I was really surprised I was the one to get charged there. I had to run him back into the black hole. Which I accomplished. I was pretty happy with that. I don't know where he charged me from. He, I, like, unless they have a ward over on the secret shop, but I don't think they do. I was just quite. I was really surprised they charged me so so instantly. Um, I know that I hadn't used a Midas for a very long time while doing the ancients, but I figured they're gonna get that kill anyway. So. Um, I went to go went to go back and heal. You can TP while you're shadow bladed. By the way, uh, by the way, um, and uh, again, a commentary about this game that that's that I'm playing quite differently than what you normally do when you play Nature's Prophet. I'm not split pushing at all this game, like at all. I'm putting zero effort into split pushing. I'm literally just farming. And again, the reason I'm doing this is because oh, I think this is that time when I last hit like insanely bad. And I missed like the whole wave. Right, I think I missed the both of those somehow. Missed that one. Oh god, this one is like really bad. Ah, ugh, I missed like 50% of those. That's bad. You should get all of those. Or sh should not be missing any of these things. I've been getting charged for a very long time here. Okay, he gave up. Yeah, it's not really a safe place for him to charge me. There, there could be TP supports and stuff, and I'm actually pretty tanky at this point. Got my shit together for that wave, thank god. Ugh. 
All right, so yeah, I'm really not split pushing that much, but again, the reason is because they have a Spirit Breaker, they have a Storm Spirit. We actually didn't have wards very much either during the game, so. And we already got all their outer towers. There's only two towers left, so. Definitely just focusing on getting last sets, and finally the Ancient Stack is going to be gone. I should probably be spreading the Treants out a little bit more for, for Vision. Like, whenever a Treant is low, you might as well send it out to Scout, for example. It's like Storm Spirit's, like, right over here. God, I didn't even realize. I think he's waiting for somebody to show up so he can gank them or something. I, I really don't know. This was not a safe place for me to be, and I think I ended up paying for it. Yeah, here comes the charge. And then I realize, here's the charge. They have dust, obviously. And he bashes me again. I was going to die anyways, probably, so I don't feel that bad about um, him bashing me a second time. It's just simply not a safe place to farm. I spread my treants out, but... Like, I don't even think I spotted the, the two chargers. And basically, the raiding team, if they're not on the map, they're going to be in the jungle. <laughs> so, like, going down there was really stupid because they're they're so close by. It's considering buying back for this one. Yeah, I did end up buying back. I could have Shadow Bladed for bonus damage there. Possibly. So, fight went okay. I had to buy back for it, so it cost me like a thousand gold. Maybe, you could argue that maybe it wasn't worth it, because all of them were likely to die. Uh, I guess it only cost me about 800 gold. It, it's definitely, I'm still behind. I don't think I got any of those kills, I just got assists, so... I probably only made back 200 of it, but I did pick up some EXP, I'm now level 16. And we can also turn this into a push. We're actually doing this through backdoor regen, by the way. Treants help a lot for tanking. So we got the tower. Not too bad. Uh, I was asking for a gank with the Zeus, but actually the uh, the Doom actually has a, dis uh, a Lothar's. Oh, he TP'd out. That's why he went away. We were waiting to spot him. We went to kill them anyways, most likely. Um, the Bolt would have revealed, but I believe he actually has a Quilling Blade, so even if I sprouted him in... Yeah, he's, he's had a Quelling Blade the whole game, so very unlikely that we we're going to kill him there. So I'm just going to go back to the jungle for now. I'm going to try to finish up my Sheep Stick. Sheep Stick should almost always be the option immediately after Midas. I've seen some people go for, like, a Orchid instead, but generally the Sheep gives you a much, much better, better option. Um, sheep is basically much better against any hero that is going to get a BKB. So, for example, Spirit Breaker, that guy's going to get a BKB, therefore Sheep is better. Um, if you can get the Orchid really fast, like way before they get their BKB, then you can usually snowball from it. But, um, and in fact, Orchid's actually really good against a couple other heroes. It's really good against Lifestealer, and it's really good against, uh, pretty good against Storm Spirit. If Storm Spirit ever has to purchase a BKB, he's had a bad time, basically. A really nice Sprout here, as you guys can see. Um, Orchid is great against Lifesteal. He's never going to get a BKB. So what it allows you to do is, uh, um, uh, Disable him before he rages, and then you can just kill him. That's always really good. A little unsure what to do here. Alright, there's my ulti. Alright, ended up working out okay. He still had a lot of mana here, so I figured uh, getting a kill off on him was going to be unlikely. But I figured I might as well TP forward. Maybe I should have gone farther, forced him into falling into me, but regardless, I don't think I was going to be able to kill him there. So, again, we're going to we're going to turn this into a push. I think I should actually TP top, taking that tower rather than pushing with the team. Uh, I think I walked over here to Midas. Yeah, I should have definitely gone there. I think we could have been able to take that one. That was a mistake for me. But again, I'm not very good at split pushing yet, so I don't always look at the map for for opportunities like that. I think I did it here. I said all right. There's a tower, it's a little undefended. I didn't end up wanting to stay that long though, and in fact I don't even really want to get close to the creep wave because it gives a chance of me being charged. They're all alive, so if Super Breaker just starts the charge, I'm going to die basically because he's going to commit, it's going to hit me, he's going to pop a dust, and he's going to combo me. And if I die, I die. And it sucks. So I just decided to spawn Treons over here instead, and then I was like, oh wait, I need to buy a Mystic Staff, I don't want to TP to my secret shop, so I'll just walk over to this secret shop, I'll pick this up now, and I'm very, very close to having that. I think I should cancel this. Holy shit. Alright, good. I canceled it. That scared me. There's a gem. 
And then I canceled it, and I was like, well, I'll go over here. I think I was going to TP there because somebody pinged the gem, and they said, get the gem, get the gem. Alright, now I'm going to try to kill him. I maybe should have sprouted myself first. I was like literally the uh, the TI3 TP right there. That was like absolutely, like I was gone basically and I still died. It was, I was quite pissed. But it wasn't too bad because I killed him and he bought back. And he honestly only has a Treads and a Null Talisman. So like any buybacks that he has at this point is going to put him so far behind. So they were saying that it wasn't very worth it for me to do that. And in a way, yes, I'm, I died. So it slowly prevents my snowball. Like it, it hurts me from uh, carrying harder. But I think if I would have been a little faster, it would have been fine. What I should have done, as soon as I got the last hit, I should have walked away from a Moonwell or a tower. I should have sprouted myself, and I should have started the TP immediately. I ended up hesitating for like a second. I was kind of like, what do I do? But what I should have done was just simply immediately gone for it. I should have backed out. should have just sprouted and TP'd. And then I would have had that like extra fraction of the second. So I guess technically it's my fault. I definitely, like, how close the TP was, if I just would have cut my delay of TPing home down by a bit, then I would have been fine. I think what I decided to do is get out of tower range and then teleport, because I was like, I don't want to take any damage. But I could have done the same by sprouting myself, actually, because it would have stopped vision and then the towers went to attack me. So. Oh well, mistakes for me. So back to the jungle, I just want to finish my, uh my um, sheep at this point. It's kind of late. I should have my sheep by maybe like, if I'm doing really well, like four or five minutes earlier or something like that. The whole jungle was cleared, so unfortunately I can't just about finish it. But I think I was going to wait for this large camp to respawn, kill that, and then I was going to go grab my sheep stick. Once you grab the sheep stick, you have a lot more ganking options. A lot more. I know some people like going Desolator as well after Shadowblade, but I really am not a huge fan of this. Um, if you're snowballing really hard, yeah, it'll give you more ganking potential. Man, how many times have we seen you just get blown up like that? I was like, I was running to go buy my uh, sheep right now, which is why I didn't TP, because I really wanted to get my sheep finished. It's too bad I didn't get this a little earlier. I could have been really helpful. Round two, baby. Revenge! They, they pinged the hell out of the gem, but I was gone. I was like, I didn't want it to be a refeed of what happened last time, so. This is the only reason to buy a TP scroll, by the way. You you pick it up because it allows you to TP in somewhere and then immediately TP out again to snag kills. So, I was able to kill him. I was pretty happy with that. I don't remember if I saw him charge or not, but I basically, I think I decided that we weren't going to get the kill. So, back to farming. It's another really nice thing about Prophet is that you can keep your farm up quite rapidly because after a team fight or a gank happens, you can always go back to getting CS. And you can't miss neutral creeps. Wow, those small lizards give almost as much gold as the big lizards. That's pretty crazy. I think I was, uh, yeah, I was sending my tree outside, I believe, to fan them out. At this point, it's not that big of a deal to Midas uh, a regular creep because my um, EXP is in a point where it only gives me stats, so each subsequent level does does little compared to what it did in the past. And this is like the point of no return. I really shouldn't be walking past this point at all. This is not safe. This is not safe at all. And even going for this this lane here was just really dumb. And I'm dead. So like, all it took was like, for me to cross the river, like right here. Once you, you can't cross this point against the Storm Spirit and a Spirit Breaker. You just can't. Even with the Lothars, because they're not bad players, so they're just going to grab dust. If you're playing against bad players, whatever. You guys can be greedy and stuff, but... I think at this point I got in the mentality, I was like, I should be split pushing. And then I went top and then just died, because I did it badly, so... And I'm dead for 60 seconds, which sucks. So, one of the many problems I have with Prophet. Regardless, I still have my items up at a pretty reasonable point. I'm going to continue getting items. I'm definitely strong compared to a lot of the other heroes. Um, if we check net worth, for example. Yeah, I'm still at number two, despite a lot of throwing. Ursa has been crushing this game. Top tower has fallen. 
The other nice part, as soon as I revive, I can just go push. I kind of wanted to go bot and take the big wave, but um, I think I ended up TPing to the, the push so we could try to take a Rax. Still haven't taken a Rax yet, so it's pretty tough. We're like way ahead in kills, but man, I saw that wave and I was like, oh god, I'm going to kill it so bad. It's hard to say no. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. So I just ultied on it instead. Now, one important thing I did here, especially if, if it's nighttime, you need to do this. But I spread my treants out slightly to get vision. So if you don't understand exactly, if uh, you're standing there pushing a tower, and all of your creeps are right here, you can only see about here. So what I did is I took two treants and I put them on the outer sides to make give us a more equivalent like day vision, basically. I don't know what I did right now. Oh, I tried to Midas and then I got scared and ran back. That was pretty good. And now we go back to jungling. Again, I have to worry about dying and stuff. Not being charged right now, but I could be. Still have a couple dead heroes, but... And also, it's pretty hard for Spirit Breaker to solo kill me at this point. This is kind of where I got scared. I was like, ah, I was sitting in a creep wave for a while. I should probably just go jungle safely so that I don't die. So I TP to a place where it'd be a lot easier for my allies to defend if I ended up getting charged. And again, we can spread these out a little bit. Try to get some vision on the enemy team. Spotted out a storm spirit. Haste. I think there were some pings. Always shift Q the invis, by the way. I didn't realize he had an abyssal, so. <laughs> and then we found the life seal on the inside, it was pretty good. Now I'm just trying to catch up so that I can sprout him, hopefully. Except we have a haste, so it doesn't matter anyways. That was pretty good. I, if you're wondering what Ursa has, I think he has a Manta and an Abyssal Blade. Yeah, Manta, Abyssal Blade, Shadow Blade. With the Boots of Travel, actually. Guys are really fast now. So, I maybe should have broken Invis with the, with the right click instead of the Hex, but I didn't know that he had an Abyssal. I should have checked his item, so I didn't realize he was going to do that. So we stacked our stuns a little bit. Could have gotten a double kill a little easier, but whatever, it still worked out. So... Not doing a very good job of spreading out my creeps. There we go. Finally put one forward. They must be smoked or something. Oh yeah, they did. They did the only thing they could do, which is gank a different lane. So they killed Zeus. Good for them. And of course when there's no trees around, you gotta summon some treants. Or summon some trees to make treants. I was really scared about getting ganked here. I don't actually think I could solo kill him here, so I just decided to play it safe. It was much more likely that he was just going to get back up and I was going to die than anything else, so. Got TB back to base to go heal. And now I'm going to buy a Desolator, I think. I don't quite have the money for it. I need like 100 gold, so. So I think what I was waiting to do was like ulti creeps or something, I think, if I remember correctly. Because like, I only need 100 gold, so I needed two creeps to have Deso. Deso's pretty nice. Um, there we go, got him. Alright, so I got Desolator. can now push harder, I can solo kill heroes better. Desolator gives you 60 damage and minus 7 armor. It's very, very good on Prophet, actually. It kind of turns him into more of like a right-click monster. It's actually a stage I don't get to very often in my, like, I remarked it while I was playing, I was like, man, I've, like, almost never played Prophet to a point where I actually had some impressive right-click. Like, where I actually felt like a carry, kind of. I, like, never get there. Just, like, never, I just never play Prophet. And I'm bad at Prophet when I do play. It makes a big difference. I was like, oh, shut up to that, then it was really dead. Midas, Midas, Midas. Got level 22. They are almost dead. Uh, 
Minus armor is really nice with Ursa as well. It helps a lot. It's gonna buy a Ghost Scepter in case I somehow get in the fountain. We need to spawn some Treants for the uh, Ursa here. It's a little trick you can do if you want to summon trees on. Uh... Oh, I didn't do it here, I thought I did. Just need to hex him. Hexed him. There it is. So, Nature's Prophet offlane. Number one goal, block camps, block their pull camp, uh, block the magic bush, block the medium camps. If you have extra treants, go block other camps, like small camps or large camps or whatever. If you spread, you have to plan ahead a little bit, make sure you bring clarity potions, all super important stuff. If you successfully block a couple camps, you're denying experience and gold and levels to their support heroes, which is good. It means it's going to be harder for them to do their job in the mid game. They had a slight advantage because they had a doom, so they had a hero that could farm independently regardless of my, me blocking. But if they did have two support heroes, like a Jakiro and a Life, or like a Jakiro and a Lina, or a Jakiro and uh, um, a Venge or something, they both would be blocked, and then they would probably have to go gank instead. So um, I, I kind of countered, uh, or they slightly countered the Prophet offlane, but I had some some good um, some good things against them. So that hurt them a lot. And then from there, get your Midas at a reasonable rate, get your Boots and Treads up at a reasonable rate. Once you have Midas and Treads, you can be a little bit more greedy in ganking, but try not to throw your life away before you get Midas, because it really delays your, your carry potential. It makes a big difference. So after you get Treads, you go Shadow Blade, so you can gank a bit better and do some decent damage. It also opens up Split Pushing. You didn't see any Split Pushing this game, number one, because I'm bad at it, and number two, because they had the perfect heroes to counter it, Storm Spirit and Spirit Breaker. So I did... Pretty much no split pushing. I have very little prioritized tar uh, towers, which is a mistake. I should have been doing that more. Um, but other than that, I think I, I played re re uh, reasonably fine. I made a couple of mistakes here. There, I was maybe a little too greedy about not showing up to team fights, and I should have been full healed more more often. Things like that, because it lost me uh, opportunity to team fight. And largely, I mean, our Ursa carried. You played really well. So. But regardless, I think I had a solid early game, and that's how you offlane Nature's Prophet. I think that is properly demonstrated, and now this video is off my chest. I finally made it. I've gotten like literally five tweets about this in the last week, so I hope you guys learned a lot. That's how you do them offlane. It's much better than jungle. If you guys want to play Nature's Prophet and be really good at them, I promise uh, offlane is, is pretty fun. As long as you get okay at Microine, and they don't have good like carries that can dive you, like Chaos Knight or Storm Spirit or um, Spirit Breaker. So, Alright, thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you later. Bye.